I've just installed a brand new DJI H4 3D gimbal onto my Phantom 2. It's about time to test it. We're going to tell you how we installed it and everything in just a moment. But first, let's see how it works in windy conditions. As you can see, the winds are buffeting the aircraft, and since I'm in GPS mode, it's fighting to hold position. These are the worst conditions for shooting stable, controlled video. Let's see how it does. Even in these strong winds, the image is stable and smooth. The H4 3D gimbal, like previous models, stabilizes roll, yaw, and allows you to control stabilized tilt of the camera angle. Panning is done by turning the orientation of the aircraft in the direction you want to pan. Let's take a detailed look at how I replaced my old damaged H3 3D gimbal with this new offering from DJI Innovations. Okay, we have a typical situation here. I've had a hard landing, or better known as a crash, and I've destroyed my um, H3 3D gimbal. As you can see, this doesn't work properly. And I've removed it, and I've tried to fix it, and it doesn't work. So, what we're going to do is I've purchased a H4 3D gimbal from DJI. Uh, actually from Drones Made Easy, who's my supplier for most of my hardware. And luckily they got this out to me rather quickly, before most people got them. We have the H4 3D gimbal, which basically, when you look at the two, they look about the same. The only differences I could find were right here in the new one. There's a tooling. Here's the old one right here. And the 4D, the H4 rather, and it has this new tooling right here on the plate where there's a couple of holes in the end. A little bit different from the old one. And um, other than that, they're pretty much the same. There was another difference that I noticed. And that other difference is in the plate that attaches to the Phantom. These... Um, risers right here are a little bit taller than the old plate was and this plate is made of plastic where the old one was made of metal. Um, a lot of people might try to use the old plate. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use the new plate and use all the proper ways of putting this together um, like you should do. Now what we've got here is we've got the um, Phantom with everything taken off. Um, as you would if you'd uh, had a wreck and uh, damaged your gimbal. Uh, before spending several hundred dollars to get a new one, you would most likely go and try to fix your old one. So this is the circumstance most of you will be in um, down the road somewhere, and you'll want to put your Hero 4 on an H4 3D gimbal instead of an H3 3D gimbal. Um, so let's do that right now. I've taken it all off. We have the standard, ooh, we have some standard stuff going on here. We have the um, uh, uh, standard boards for power and for FPV hub that most people run on their craft. I have two of each board on this one, so don't be confused. These two are both FPV hubs, and these two are both the, um, uh, uh, the power boards that go with the gimbal. Um, they're called interference enhancement boards, and you need to use these to stabilize the power for the gimbal. I use a dual broadcasting setup at times, and therefore I need two FPV hubs, and I use two power um, boards as well to make sure that I'm contouring the power all the way through my circuitry. So, we're just going to be using the one power board and the one FPV hub, like most people have on theirs, and you would probably have it in this circumstance where you've just unplugged the gimbal, everything else is plugged in and ready to go. And we will show you how we do that. Right. Okay, this is the procedure for switching out your old 
H3 3D gimbal with the H4 3D gimbal from DJI. Let me show you what we're going to start with here. The tools you're going to need are a Phillips head screwdriver and your Allen wrench that fits the screws on the Phantom 2. You'll also need your mounting bracket and screws from your old gimbal if they're in good condition. If not, they'll be available in the accessory pack over here. I used the screws from my old gimbal, so I've got those here, and I've taken out and prepared two anti-drop screws, or clips, that go into the gimbal base. This is one of those anti-interference boards. I don't need this one because I've already got two on my craft, so we're going to leave that as well on the side. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your bracket the new bracket, make sure that you have all of the uh, anti-vibration dampeners in place and make sure they're seated properly. Find the orientation that the screw holes match on the Phantom 2 and the base and get it set up. You're going to take your anti-drop clips and you're going to place them in the M1 and M3 positions. I'll show you what those are in just a second. I put these in and place it up here. This is the M1 position, motor 1, and the M3 position, motor 3, back here. So you're going to put the two any drops in these two positions. Now, we're going to take the four screws that held my old gimbal on, and we're going to use those four screws to put this gimbal in place. So, let's do that right now. More difficult with the camera in front of me than I'm used to, but figure this out. So it takes four screws. Put this in. You want them kind of snug. Make sure you've got the Loctite on the screw threads. Most of the screws that we use for these things already have that on there. But if it's worn off yours, either use some new screws or get yourself some Loctite and put it on there. Make sure you've got a way for the screw not to screw itself out over time. Now, we'll go back and just retighten real quickly, make sure that we've got torque on all the screws, just like you would your tire. Feels good. Now, we've got our anti-drop pins in M1 and M3. We've got our anti-vibration dampeners there. We've got our new gimbal, the H4 3D gimbal that's brand new here. Before we put it on, we're going to do one other thing, and that is we're going to use the connector from the old H3 3D gimbal and put it on the new one. That's really easy. All you have to do is this little black clip right here, the little black clip, this holds the ribbon cable in place. And If you pop it up like that, then you can pull the cable out very simply. Now I would hold on to that cable on the H3 3D because these cables break and it's always good to have a spare. So I'm going to hold on to this and I'll dissect it later and get that part out that I want. This one goes on right here. Now this comes with a piece of tape on it. You want to be very careful. Remove the tape from the backing and remove the tape from the ribbon cable without hurting the ribbon cable. Uh, some people use tweezers for this. I just peel it from the side of the ribbon cable, Ugh, hard to get a grab here, side of the ribbon cable and peel it up this way. It usually comes off really nicely, doesn't cause any problems. Some really sticky tape. Alright, there we go, I'll get that off to the side. Get rid of that. Now, remember, you have to put this on in the right orientation. So. You want to make sure that the connectors, those little contacts right there, go on right that direction facing up towards you. And you want to push this black thing down and gently tug. Make sure it's good. There it is. We replaced the connector on the end already. Now, we're going to move on to moving the gimbal into place on the drone here. 
So the first thing you're going to do is just mount it on here, get it placed the right direction with the motor at the back, and make sure your orientation is correct. And you're going to get these little white bumpers right here, and you're going to have to put them into place. See if I can show you how we're going to do that. You squeeze them, and you get them in there, and you just maneuver them in. And I spin them sometimes. Just want to make sure they all get seated. All four, all the way around. to spin each one of them a little bit to make sure that they're both in at the bottom and top still. Don't cause any problems there. And voila! Get my other peripherals out of the way here. Looks like we have installed the gimbal up to this point. So now the other thing we have to do is finish the anti-drop clips. Make sure that they're in properly. If you see, there's two little knobs right here. You want this clip to go in between those two little ridges. So you just want to click it down one time. Don't push too hard, because if you compress the anti-dampening devices, it's not going to do the job. And you're going to have some very shaky video. Now, let's get this one on over here. Let's do it in one, one snap down. Lightly. Go on too tight. Putting a free play there. Okay, the next thing we have to do is you have to come to the back here where the cables are. Now, the way you wire this, in case you've taken all your wires off, the way you're going to wire this is this anti interference board has a capacitor on it. The capacitor is at the exit end of the board. Your cable comes out of the phantom leg comes up and it goes into the side of the, any interference board that does not have the capacitor. Then it goes to this board. It comes out the other side and you have a cable that goes from here to your FPV hub. The FPV hub splits out the video so that we can see a first person view and send it to a transmitter. You might not have this board and if you don't then this wire goes directly into the back of the gimbal. If you do have this board then you don't go out to this cable this one goes directly into the gimbal. So we're going to plug that in right now. It goes this way. If I can get this in. It seems like it ran out of something there. Probably. So once you get that in place, you'll see how it looks right there. You'll have all the wiring done, and everything should be hunky-dory to go. Now, a couple other things we have to do here real quick. We have to put the camera back on, which is what I'm using to shoot this, so we're not going to put the H4 in. We're going to put the Hero 3 in, and <laughs> that one's full. place it in there and show you how we do this. Once you put the Hero 3 in, of course you need to put your bracket on. Get your two screws that you use to keep the GoPro in place on your old gimbal and reuse them. And we have a spare pair in the um, accessories bag. Sure, I could have done this faster if I'd have done it before, but this is the first time for me and for you. So we're all going to do it together in a slow and methodical way. <sighs> we might just speed some of this up and get through with some of it. And while you're doing
you're doing is be very careful not to hurt the ribbon cable because that thing is so easy to break. Okay, so we're going to plug the cable. This is the video board that has a connector on it. It's a breakout board for the video and audio. And we're going to put it in there like that. It's going to be all set to go. And then we're going to be able to test, calibrate, upload firmware, and do everything we need to do.